guys who know you. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've talked, obviously, and you've told me a lot of, about your past, but even way before that. Yeah. A lot of people don't realize that in 1996, 97, this happened roughly around April, you yeah. think of yeah. around that yeah, period. Yeah. Um, it's in the spring. Yeah. Um, you're a professional journalist. I mean, you went to college. You're educated. You're analytical. Yeah. You've never, back in those days, the paranormal wasn't what it is these days. No. People don't talk about, no. didn't talk about it. Yeah. And people definitely didn't at the time, I know I did, and I'm 47, you're a little younger than me. Mm -hmm. People didn't even know what that term was. Exactly. Or what even, there, weren't, there wasn't even anything out there like this right. at that point. Yeah. So when you're thinking about back to that time and age and being the professional that you are, and I know you've encountered this, um, some people have accused you of making it up, but there is no reason in the world to do something like that, <laughs> you um, know? <laughs> yeah, if you want to make me, if you want to make me angry, accuse mm -hmm. me of making up, making up the Black Eyed Kids. Um, I have no reason to make this story up. In fact, this is exactly the sort of thing that would hurt my professional career. Correct. A lot of people have said, oh, I've done this to gain some sort of fame. Well, I've, no reason to. I, any fame that I've, no. that I've gained is because of awards and such that I've won for my professional work. This has nothing to do with black eyed kids. Obviously, I'm not working at the Washington Post or someplace like that now because of this. Um, I... I told the story because I write, and one of the ways that I deal with things sometimes is to write them down. It's a cathartic experience Pen for me yeah. to, to just put it down. And I shared it initially with a small group of people on a, uh, on a list serve back in the day, you know, the email mm -hmm. lists um, that um, had to do with paranormal accounts. And these were people who I knew and trusted very much, and I shared the story. Your, then, your control forum, yeah. per se. And know. then it kind of got out from there. And then as it proliferated, uh, this became, I guess you would call it an early viral sensation, even before we had that terminology. Right. And it passed around and passed around, and all of a sudden I started getting phone calls and emails and all kinds of things from people just this flood mm -hmm. initially of people well what are they and you know i believe you and all this sort of thing and right. and then of course you know inevitably after that the 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 skeptics have the backlash right. and um and we know skeptics are always going to be skeptics and yeah. and the thing is there's nothing that i can do to convince these people mm -hmm. And especially there was a period of time where I just got tired of talking about it and I kind of shut down. And I think that's when a lot of this sort of kind of spun a little bit out of control and uh, I wasn't around to help shape the message as much. And right. it, I, I don't know. Um, like, like you were telling me earlier, like this period where you shut down, the story kind of got changed at that point, you know, on different a, a areas, little bit, yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. yeah. Game. You tell one person, you tell another person, you change one detail every mm -hmm. time. Uh, I mean, I stand by exactly what I wrote. As far as I'm concerned, that's that's my official document of what happened. Mm -hmm. um, and I wrote it in the style that I would write any other thing. Um, that 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 is a documentary account of how this went down. Mm -hmm. And... And what most people don't realize um, is that we're both professionals. You know, yeah. a lot of people in the paranormal field who take it seriously are professionals. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people, I, I know engineers in this field. Mm -hmm. um, I know scientists in this field. You know, you're a professional journalist. Um, I used to be a professional insurance claims adjuster. Mm -hmm. um, I was in the military. Several people, you know, that come from all walks of life, and they're mm -hmm. very professional. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the paranormal, the different things that are out there, and this is, you know, probably at the top of the list as far as being the strangest, the most disturbing mm -hmm. type of thing, you know, that happened to somebody. Exactly. The people out there don't realize that. There's no reason in the world for a professional to make up a story like this. Exactly. And, uh, you know, people have asked me, well, how much money have you made from this? And I'll tell you, mm -hmm. nothing. 
-hmm. absolutely nothing. Even when I was on Monsters and Mysteries, I wasn't paid anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I've done all of everything, every interview I've ever done, everything I've ever written. I mean, it's always been gratis. There's no money involved here. I have not improved myself in any way mm -hmm. through this. And in fact, in some respects, I, I, I feel like I've hurt myself in right. some respects by, right. by having it out there. Because now if you go on different forums, you know, you'll see Brian Bethel created the myth of the Black Eyed Kids in 1990. And there, yeah. there's nothing that makes me angrier to see that. Because, people act like you started it all. Because yeah. I know yeah. now from research from people like David Weatherly and other people who are in the paranormal field that I trust, mm -hmm. that there are accounts that go back decades. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, there are reports in the 50s. Mm -hmm. There are reports in the 80s. I mean, just because I put something on and during the early age of the Internet and was one of the first people perhaps on the Internet to talk about something like this doesn't mean that I created it. Mm -hmm. I have no interest in creating anything that is false, that is mm -hmm. antithetical to what I do. It's just an event that happened. And it, again, the viewers don't realize, I realize I'm talking to you but the viewers don't realize that you were just doing a common everyday task that paying, anybody would be doing. Paying a bill. And it was getting dark. You're probably, you know, thinking, oh, I got to beat the sun because, you know, so I can see. Mm -hmm. And you want to get your deposit made at the bank, which was just down the block, I believe, right? Uh, well, I, actually, I was paying an internet bill. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, they had a drop slot, and I was halfway using the light from the theater marquee because I knew that the sun was going to go down and I thought that mm -hmm. if it got too dark, at least I could use that to, to jot my check down. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting there just writing my check um, to Camelot, which was my internet provider at the time. And mm -hmm. um, and there, there, there they are. Yep. And, and again, you know, in a little while, we're going to go down to the location so we can give everybody an idea mm -hmm. of what this area looks like. And, and the movie theater is closed down now. Yeah. But, you know, we're going to show the viewers in a little bit what everything looks like. But the main thing is that it's a wide open parking lot. Mm -hmm. You're sitting there in a relatively empty parking lot. Yeah. Which normally you would see somebody walking across the parking lot. Yeah. If they were coming to your vehicle. Exactly. And they came out of nowhere, right? Just, um, I, I hadn't been there for more than just a few seconds. I had put my car in park. I grabbed my checkbook, grabbed a pen, started to write out my check. And I'd had enough time maybe to... Um, I went ahead and signed my name at the bottom. And then I was about to fill out the rest of the check. And, and in that small amount of time the knock comes alarm just about anybody i mean just just anybody walking up to your car period mm -hmm. is going to alarm anybody and and we know you know i i know because i've been doing the paranormal for so long there's lots of things out there the paranormal covers basically above the normal i would put this at the top of the list exactly. i mean i really would as far as the strangers what do you say we go out to the location Show sounds, the good. sounds good mm -hmm. let's do that Uh, like normal children, um, 
somewhere between the ages of 9 and 12. Uh, one of them has kind of curly hair, olive complexion. How tall would you say they were? Um, about that, that high. I mean, you know, okay. like I said, it was hard to, hard to really tell. Um, Just your normal teenagers, yeah. basically, what you would think. And um, the other one had very pale skin, red hair, some freckles. Um, and the first thing I think is, of course, that they're going to hit me up for money. And I, it's the most logical thing I can think of. And so I'm a little bit irritated by that. So I roll down my window a little bit and I say, can I help you? Um, and then, this is when it starts to get strange. Only one of them spoke. Uh, and in the, my retellings of the story, I've nicknamed him the spokesman because of that. Uh, it's the curly-headed kid. And immediately I noticed that he's just very smooth in his delivery. A little too smooth for a child. But also immediately there's this aura of absolute terror that begins to grip me. I am completely frightened of these children. I have no idea why. It is not rational. They haven't even hardly said anything to me. But this fight or flight response immediately kicks in and... I remember being just absolutely terrified. So the spokesman comes up and says, Hey, mister, uh, we forgot our money, and uh, we want to see the movie, so can you give us a ride to our mom's house? And so I start questioning them. I, I, well, how far away do you live? Oh, it's not far. Don't worry. It won't take long. And then he, he starts saying, he's gets the idea apparently that I'm nervous because he starts saying, well look mister you know we're not going to hurt you. This goes on and I keep getting more and more and more frightened. Also I've noticed a couple of times I've caught my hand kind of trying to stray toward the car door. I asked them well what movie are you planning to see tonight? And they say Mortal Kombat which kind of dates this. Uh, <laughs> so I look Very at, popular movie at the time. So I look yeah. up at the theater marquee and, more, yeah. and Mortal Kombat is playing. Right. But then I look down at my clock in the car. Okay, Mortal Kombat is already showing. It's the last showing of the night. Mm -hmm. If I take these kids anywhere and bring them back, they're going to see at most 20 minutes of a movie before it's, it's over. So I know immediately that something is not clicking together properly. I looked away, and then when I looked back at them, that's when I saw finally what my brain was trying to tell me. Both of them had coal black eyes. Completely black. Um, couldn't see any iris? No, couldn't see anything? Nothing, nothing. Nothing at all. Just these big black orbs of night. Now, I, I mean, I felt like this cold rush into me. That, But this wasn't an external cold. This was more of an internal cold that flooded into me. And I was just, I knew that at that point I was in the presence of something otherworldly. Um, and I knew that I had to escape. And if I didn't escape, I would die. I, I knew that, that. Was, that was the overall feeling that yes. you had to get away at that moment. Uh, right. So I made some excuse. I said, sorry kids, I forgot something. I've got to go get it. I hope you find a ride. And I began to roll up the window but he starts pounding on the window hard enough that I actually worried about the glass. It felt like the car was moving. How many, just real quick, how many people, how many cars were in the parking lot at that time? Hardly any. Um, there may have been people at the concession stand. Freckle-faced kid in the background looks absolutely confused. And he says, Mister, we can't come inside your car unless you tell us it's okay. I throw it into reverse, rock it out of here, probably at that exit over there. I look back in my rearview mirror, I can't see 